All right, so I'm gonna be replacing the transmission pan and gasket on my 67 Ford Mustang C4 automatic. I went ahead and bought these pans off of Amazon. Uh, the first one is this one. It has a little screw in portion for the modulator. So that's just not gonna work for my application. So I went ahead and bought another one from Speedway Motors. Came with the drain plug, just black. And then with that, I just have a normal gasket and then AMK hardware to replace it, uh, the screws. And that is the part number right there. So let's go ahead and put this in. All right, guys, so there's my transmission pan gasket or pan. As you can see, it's very, very leaky. So I'm going to be replacing that by removing the 11 bolts around the side, putting on the new gasket with some gasket sealer, and then um, putting on the new pan itself that does have a drain plug. Don't ever need to service it or anything. You know, I want to take it completely off. I do have a rear main seal and an oil pan and oil pan gasket that I'm going to be installing, but I'm going to post that in a separate video. Today I'm just focusing in on the transmission. Uh, my transmission shifts really good after sitting for about 20 years. I just added in some transmission fluid, kind of cleaned it up and everything, and to be honest, it actually worked pretty well. I did change the gear on the speedometer cable, and there is no screw holding in that cable or the gear there so I just went to the local tractor supply co and honestly just grabbed a whole bunch of random <laughs> uh, screws until one fit and then I believe it's my kick down but it's just been sitting up here it goes on the left side and it kind of comes out over here with the on the exhaust but since then I put dual exhaust on so it click or it connects over here on the left side of the transmission. It might be kind of hard to see. It's got like a braided steel wire. Um, so I gotta look into that. I'll do a little bit of research because well, I'm just not entirely sure exactly what that is. But um, I'm gonna start by replacing this gasket and uh, cleaning up a lot of this grime and everything that's here already today. And then I'll be able to kind of see where it's leaking. I got a uh, transmission mount on order i have it in my shopping cart online i just haven't decided if there's a better option other than just replacing the stocks if you guys have any uh, opinions or any information that might be worth sharing just let me know guys so here's the old pan taken off the old transmission pan um i okay there is a gasket there you can barely see it there's definitely no gasket seal or anything uh, i did a time lapse video and i would say all of them but one of those bolts had anything on them i mean i could almost spit them all off by hand i mean half a turn on my ratchet socket those things were coming off uh, all the way so that could have been an issue very very brown that's supposed to be very red uh, that transmission fluid sorry about the camera angle here i'm gonna flip you guys under so you can see and as you guys can see up on that transmission pan i'm gonna let it sit and drain really trying to get everything out of there but um it all looks original, but it actually looks in pretty good shape. It's gonna make my job easy too, because there is no like gasket maker or anything on it. I mean, I'm just gonna wipe that down, hit it really quick with a uh, Scotch Brite, just to get any any other debris and call that good. So now I'm gonna run to the auto parts store, get some thread locker because I just ran out, and some uh, gasket maker, just because you always wanna have more than not enough <laughs> and then i'm gonna go through uh get the new gasket pan on and then i'll uh, refill it up with fluid and then i'll check the uh 
transmission coolant lines that I did over there in a previously. Uh, but I might do a video on that later. All right, guys, so I got the new stuff here. The new uh, AMK hardware, gasket, pan with the drain plug. Uh, I got some red thread, thread locker for the new hardware. And then I am gonna use some uh, ultra black gasket maker. Uh, for me, I've used this stuff on everything. It's been amazing. I'm gonna continue to keep using it. Even some people are against it. Uh, I'd rather have that extra level of security and not have to mess with it again. So the AMK product bolts, they are just like the originals, half inch. It's the size of the originals I just took off. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start by getting the black open. So in this application, because I uh, have a brand new gasket and everything, which I don't know why you wouldn't replace gaskets for, you know, for the price of the uh, I'm just going to go ahead and spread a thin layer on the gasket itself to start. All I'm going to do is go back. Let me do is just do a little layer to start, and that's just because I want something that'll help it stick once I get it in place. And then, if you can see the uh, bolt holes, I'm going in between the bolt holes and the gasket itself. That way I don't have anything potentially coming out around those bolt holes. All right, now I got that spread out on the gasket. Now comes the fun part. What I'm gonna do is put on some uh, latex gloves, nitro gloves. I'm gonna go ahead and spread this around. Uh, what I wanna do is get this side of the gasket coated completely. And I just do that with some gloves. Kind of to get a nice even-ish layer. It's not always going to be perfect, especially doing it like this. This stuff gets everywhere, so I really recommend wearing some gloves that you can just throw away. Cool thing about doing it this way too, you can clean up those bolt holes right away. It doesn't leave anything. Um, I know some people put like an inch thick of this stuff on there. I've never used that much. Uh, a little bit seems to really go a long way. It's more about getting just a nice little even layer. I'm gonna set that guy back down. I think it will probably work backwards. Oops. Don't do it now. Because now I want to get this side. I'm gonna do the same thing for this side. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give the uh, 
transmission side where it hooks up into the actual motor and the, the actual pan, and that should help seal anything on both sides to where it shouldn't have any issues. So I would much rather do this now versus having to chase down a leak, even though my car is riddled with leaks, so. <laughs> really matter I'm sure I have leaks elsewhere Two, we're gonna put on some gloves, spread it out, get a nice even layer, and then we're gonna put that gasket on. And then after that, I will uh, head on out to the car. I'm gonna bring that thread locker with me, open it in here. And I'm just gonna start by putting on a couple screws at a time, thread locker them on, and then just go on from there. The uh, bolts, when I took it off, there was no thread locker. No thread locker, no sealant, nothing. Um, and like I said, they're half inch bolts and I had an, an extension on my socket. I was on my ratchet there and I mean, it took a quarter of a turn, maybe half a turn to uh, go ahead and get those off. So that could have been why I was leaking all over the place. But uh, when I bought this car, I was sitting, uh, the store I got was about 20 years. So just with all the unknown conditions of it all, I'd rather just kind of go through and replace. Especially because uh, a lot of these reproduction parts are just getting to be a lot better than what they used to be. Uh, so for the price, kind of the peace of mind, some of the new technology, especially some of these reproduction parts for me, I'd rather just go ahead and replace a lot of the stuff that I can. And so far, I've had really good luck doing that. You know, I've seen some stuff online, people having some horrible issues, but I've been having the exact opposite issue. I've had pretty good luck overall. I mean, nothing's ever gonna fit perfect if it's not OEM, but you know, you can always get pretty dang close and you're gonna have to make it work a little bit. So now what I'm doing is I'm just pushing this gasket down a little bit. A little bit of this gasket maker will kind of come out the side, that's fine. Uh, just kind of pressing it down, getting it in the spot. I like using this gasket maker too because it will help hold all this together as one piece. Unfortunately though, uh, you are going to be going through some gloves. Just have to my recommend just getting a whole bunch. Oh, some reusable. Get the latex and nitrile gloves. You know that's a little. That's okay to have a little bit overhanging everywhere because I'm gonna uh, clean that up after I do up on the car. So yeah, we'll take you guys out to the car, get the camera set up, go ahead and bring these guys. My thread locker. We're gonna throw it on, let it sit a couple minutes, and after it sits for a couple minutes, I'll uh, go on ahead and throw the uh, new fluid in there. Uh, and then I'll probably start it up, make sure there's no leaks or anything. I'll have to double check and see. I think this stuff really needs some time to dry. Uh, it says 24 hours. That's definitely gone. Before that, I've never had issues. So.
All right, guys, here's a transmission fluid I took out. Um, yeah, it's definitely much needed. I have added a couple quarts of transmission fluid uh, in the car when I first started, got it running and everything. So, don't know where that's at, but hopefully, replacing this pan gasket and pan will uh, retain that new fluid and make it run a little, little bit better, but we'll see. All right, guys, so I went ahead and got it all installed. Last thing I got left to do is to throw in some transmission fluid. This is the best thing that my auto parts store had on hand for older Fords. Uh, I'm not gonna put that in until tomorrow. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for 24 hours for that gasket maker to really set up, and I'll add this in. <laughs> 